Now, this is like a God morning of God mornings, right? The only other one, like anything like this, would be Christmas, right? So, I mean, we get that special delivery that day, and we get today, we get the special resurrection delivery, the gift that makes the first one worth giving. Because if he'd just been born, he just was here, he just, anyone could be born, right? And if he just died on the cross, anyone could die. But that resurrection connects the dots. It finishes the line. It, it redeems us. It gives the power to what he did. And so, really exciting. We have us a God morning here this morning. And uh, I'm, just, I'm just stoked. I'm just, you know, all around the country for millennia, pastors have been standing in front of their congregations and they've been saying, He is risen. And the congregations have responded, he has risen indeed, so today, I don't want to, this is one time I want to be like the rest of them, right? He is risen. risen Absolutely, hallelujah, praise him, praise him. Um, Let's let's go to our Father. Dear Lord, thank you so much for today. Thank you for this moment, this time, dear Lord. Thank you for the blessing that you've given us, dear Lord. You've given us your son. You gave us your son not just to live and teach and give us examples, but you gave us your son to sacrifice himself for our frailties. And then you brought him back out of the grave and you said, death will not conquer you. Death will not conquer you because I have come for you. Jesus, thank you so much for stepping up to the plate and way beyond. Jesus, thank you so much for loving us in a way that we don't even get, we don't even understand. We can't even come close to comprehend it. Thank you so much for loving us for that. Every time we mess things up, every time we let you down, you still come in and go, hey, guess what? I still love you. It doesn't matter. Let's get back up. Let's take the next step. I'll carry you when you can't walk, but I want you to walk. Just take the next step and let me walk alongside you. And Lord, we thank you for that fact. Lord, we thank you for the message we're about to receive. We thank you for your message that we're about to receive. Dear Lord, I ask you, keep me out of the way. Do not let me be any part of this other than a conduit. Lord, open our hearts. Open our hearts. Continue what you started at Christmas. Continue what you started on Friday night. Continue, or on Thursday night, I mean, and continue what you, you started on Friday. Continue that. Continue that in our hearts today, dear Lord. Expand our hearts in a way that we have no clue we possibly could be expanded. Dear Lord, strengthen us in a way we've never been strengthened. And we pray these things in your Son, Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen. I uh, thank you, Caitlin, for sacrificing. Mary had a little lamb. uh, Mary, did you know, is not her. Mary had a little lamb. She likes that one. Mary, (laughs) Mary, did you know, is not her favorite song to sing just because of where her pitch range is at and whatever. And she blesses me with it every Easter and every Christmas, and we're going to continue to do that. And I can tell you, I was back there having to wipe my tears again today because it is such a powerful, powerful song if you hear the words, if you let them into your heart. Um, so anyway, um, one, one Easter morning, there was this farmer, uh, his, his wife went and she boiled up a bunch of eggs and she colored them, she dyed them all these different colors and stuff. And then she put them out in the barn so that, so that the kids would be able to go and find them later right? And uh, pretty soon the farm rooster goes walking into the barn and he sees all these colored eggs. Now he doesn't understand Easter, see? So he goes, he, he sees all these colored eggs and he goes and finds a peacock and beat the snot right out of him. He's like, <laughs> so, okay, so anyhow, um, then there's another one because uh, I can't stop at one today. Little Johnny, so he's sick. He couldn't make it to church. He's just, he's really feeling not good, right? So he doesn't make it to church and and. Pretty soon his brothers and sisters and his, and his parents come on home and they're all carrying these palm branches. And he's like, hey, what's up with the palm branches? And dad says, well, he says, when Jesus come, everyone raise palm branches over his head, wave the palm branches at him. Little Johnny goes, well, just my luck. The one day I'm sick, can't go to church, Jesus shows up. So, <laughs> um, okay, so Jesus is here every day. Okay, we know that. But so, um, we had a dark night on Friday night, did we not? Was our service not a little intense? 
Um, I wanted to lighten it up a little bit today because Jesus come and he shined that light, right? He come back out of that tomb. He come back out of that dark and he lit it up, right? He lit up the world while he was here, but he really lit it up that day he, res he, he resurrected from that tomb. That day that he came through and finished the prophecy that had been made about him and he came and he sacrificed for you and I. And so we're going to go through that. We're going to look through that, uh, the, the resurrection story through the eyes of Luke. Uh, Luke 24, verse 1 through 6, um, it says, On the first day of the week, very early in the morning, the women took the spices they had prepared and went to the tomb. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, and, but when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were wondering about this, suddenly two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning stood beside them. Can you imagine that? Wow, talk about lighting up a dark tomb. In their fright, the women bowed, their, bowed down on their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He has risen. He has risen. And all too often we have a tendency to go look at its tomb, don't we? But he's not in the tomb anymore. That was a short stay. That was a short, short stay. He's not there. He's risen. So instead, they find these two angels in the tomb where Jesus had been, and he's announcing the fact that Jesus has been raised. So these women, they go running back to the disciples. They go cruising on back to where everyone's gathered at, right? And go back, and they let them know, he's alive, he's alive, he's risen. Our Messiah's not dead, he's alive. And when she gets there, by the time the ladies get there already, two of the disciples... Multiple had left, but two of them are written about that two of them had already left and were heading back to Emmaus. They were going back to Emmaus. They were going back to their old lives because their Messiah was gone. The guy they thought was their guy was gone. Luke 24, verse 13 through 21 says, Now that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. They were, wa they were talking with each other about everything that had happened, as they talked and discussed these things with each other, Jesus himself came up and walked along with them, but they were kept from recognizing him. He asked them, what are you discussing together as you walk along? They stood still, their faces downcast. One of them, named Cleopas, asked him, are you the only one visiting Jerusalem who does not know the things that have happened here in these days? What things, he asked. About Jesus of Nazareth, they replied. He was a prophet, powerful in word and deed before God and all the people. The chief priests and our rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death, and they crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. And what is more, it is the third day since all this took place. They'd already given up hope. They'd already given up faith. We thought he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. That same day, it says, that same day. What day is that day? That's that sunny Sunday morning. It's that third day when he arose. That's when Jesus meets him on the road. And I, I say, you know, that's, that's nothing because in reality, see, there's, everyone says, why do we say three days when it wasn't really, because he died on Friday, and then, but, but then Sunday he's alive again in the morning, so it's really not three days because we especially in this day and age, think of days as 24 hours. So now we, we should have 72 hours in there. But wait a minute, this isn't 72 hours because he died at 3 o'clock in the afternoon and he arose at sunrise. Right? And so he only had one full day in the grave. So he's got nine hours on, on, on Friday night that he's been dead. And he's got a few hours, depending on what time sunrise was there that day. You know, he might have six, seven, eight hours that day. So really, it's only like a day and a half, a little over. But in their day, in, the Jew, in, in Christ's time, the Jewish people counted from sunrise to sunset. Or, I mean, sunrise to sunrise as a full day. So we do, we do uh, midnight to midnight, right? We, they, so they do sunrise to sunrise. So on Friday night is their, is their um, um, Sabbath starts, right, at sunset, Okay. So, so he died 3 o'clock in the afternoon approximately, right? So that's a day, 
in their day, if it was a part of a day, it was a day. It didn't mean it was 24 hours, it meant it was a day. So even though it was just a few hours, it was still considered. And same with Sunday morning. So on the third day, and so many read it that he was in the grave for three days. No, he was not. It says on the third day he rose again. Okay, so these guys within about a 36, 38 hour period had already given up on Jesus. They'd already given up on God. And I got to tell you, we don't even give them that long most times. We pray a prayer and we expect an answer. We want an answer. We want it right now because that's when I, I prayed it now and I meant for it right now. And I meant it to be the answer that I want, not the answer that he knows I need. And so then we, we're really like, oh, he's mad at me. Oh, he's just ignoring me. Oh, what I do now? Or worse yet, when we're married, what'd you do, right? But we do, don't we? I mean, it's kind of humorous, but, but my wife would be like, yeah, I've been wondering that for a while. So, um, so it's okay. Um, but the thing is, people lose hope just a moment too soon. See, they gave up on Sunday morning. They started walking. Guess what? They wouldn't have started walking until daybreak because they tended not to travel at night. There was too many bandits and such around. And in this time, especially being a Christ follower, their lives were at great risk as it was during the day, let alone in the dark. So they wouldn't have left until in the morning. When did Jesus rise? In the morning. When the women went to the tomb at sunrise, he'd already arose. Jesus was alive. He just hadn't showed himself to them yet. He had risen again. He just hadn't showed himself to them yet. And they gave up on him. And we do. We have a tendency to do just exactly that. Had they given it just a little bit longer, the women would have come running back in and they too would have heard, he's alive, he's risen, right? And, and, but instead, they left and gave up on their hope. They gave up their faith. We do that a lot. We think, you know, I've been married for a blink and so it's time for me to give up on this marriage. Well, it didn't go the way I thought. It was, it, was, it, was, it was good for that year when we were in the honeymoon phase, you know. And then after that, well, I just kind of... Or we even, we'll even do it with... It doesn't even need to be something like that where there's a covenant necessarily that way. It might be a job. It might be a business. We start a business and we're like, well, we're, we're doing it. And then, you know, you get six months into it and it's like, well, I'm not rich like I thought I'd be. No, so give that away. And we walk away from it, Right? We give up before we give God a chance to do what he wants to do. And he wants to use you and he wants to use me to perform the miracles that Jesus Christ gave us the power to do when he come up through that grave. No matter what you're doing, no matter where you're going, you've heard me say it before, I'm going to say it over and over again because there's so much truth and so much power in it. The reality is, here's the thing, if God calls you to take the step, where God calls, God provides. God will provide. God provides wherever God leads. Right? We've talked about it. If he put that step in front of you, you take that step. I don't care if you feel him at your door at the moment, if you feel him right there giving you everything you need at the moment. But if you know God's calling you to do it, then do it. Have faith. Do it. God will provide what you need. There's the other key to that. We have this tendency to think, but I need six cars. I need the jet ski. I need a house. In this case, we, right now we do. I need a house with three stalls, right? We forget who really knows what we need. I need a big cushy office with all the fancy office furniture. And I, well, it's got to be a really comfy co uh, leather sofa in there because, well, what if someone comes and visits me and we need to sit down side by side and talk, you know? We've got to have the big conference room table, so we've got to have that for this business. I gotta have 2.5 children, so if my wife can't provide that, well then, 
I guess I'll find another wife. I got to have the picket, white picket fence out front, and if he's not going to build me a white picket fence, well, then I guess I'll find another husband. And we just give up on what God intends for us to have. We give up because of what we want, not what God says, this is what you need. So these guys gave up. Now, what would you do if, what would you do if God said, you know what? Sheldon's praying for this. And he's positive he needs this for the church. And, and God says, hey, you know what? I'm in agreement with him. This is what he needs. And on day 19, I'm going to give it to him. And on day 18, before I go to bed, I say, you know what? Fold up shop. We're done. And he never got to deliver the miracle that he had prepared for me for, for this church. Right? We have to stay the course. We have to stay the course. We have to hold on to hope and faith. We have to hold on to hope and faith. We're such a fickle world today that we give up on things so quickly. We throw everything away, and we don't want to do that. Um, verse 14 talks about how they were, they were walking along, and everything. Uh, they're talking about everything that happened. And what do you suppose that conversation was like? I, 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 just, I think about that conversation that those two guys were having, and it doesn't tell us, right? It doesn't really tell us the meat of what they were talking about. They just, it just says they're talking about the events, right? And so we, I got to wonder, this, this, this time I think probably was fairly, fairly deep but yet fairly shallow. See, it was a time for reflection. They had a time of reflection. And, and I got I to gotta believe, though, that in this conversation they were like, man, he, he had us going. I thought he was the one too. Guess not. Well, he did pretty good on the miracles, but apparently he's just a magician. Right? I, I thought he was going to redeem Israel. Guess not. I guess we've got to go back to the Pharisees and the Sadducees. I guess we've got to go back to the same old, same old. And they're just kicking the ground. They're just walking along. They're like, oh, man. And then Jesus walks up and talks to him. <laughs> I think that's awesome. I think that's awesome. He comes up. And they're, they're spending this time reflecting. They're spending time. And it's, that's what you and I need to do. They were reflecting on what Christ had done and what Christ, you know, the events leading up to. So they were reflecting on Christ. But I'm afraid in their humanness, they most likely, and I don't know this. This is me. In their humanness, especially from the way they responded to Christ, and because they were blinded to know who he was, they were not allowed to know who he was, to me tells me that it wasn't necessarily all uplifting and faith-holding. They were struggling, and they'd given up. Because God reveals himself to us when? When we have faith. He reveals himself to us when we do what we're called to do, even if we don't know how we're going to do it. We just know we're called to take the step. And when we take that step, he reveals what it is we need. I got a feeling they probably weren't going, yeah, he's going to come. He, he's, he'll see. Oh, he's a magician. He can get out of the tomb. He's, oh, it'll work out. It'll be, no, it's still going to work. I don't think that's what it was. I don't think they had enough faith to, to even pray for someone effectively at that point in time. Just, my content, just what I would contend if I, from what I read of this and from anything I study on this, they just weren't very convinced that he was their Lord and Savior anymore. And it took them that long. And I think, I think it's also kind of funny that these two guys are walking along and Jesus is out there, right? Okay, to, to play with me on this one. Okay, so they're walk, <laughs> Jesus walks up there over there talking. So what are you talking about? Oh, oh, this Jesus, you don't know Jesus. But he just, well, he said he was all this in a bag of chips, but he, you know, obviously he really wasn't really all that much, you know? And Jesus is like, oh, really? What's up with that? You know? And they're telling Jesus what had just happened, right? They're like, yeah, they just crucified him. They just hung him on the cross. They... they 
brutalized him so bad you couldn't hardly even tell he was human. And then they hung him on the cross and they killed him and, and now he's dead and it's all over with. And, and they're telling Jesus what Jesus already lived. I think it's funny how they're telling Jesus what happened to himself. I just find humor in that. I find it where they're like, because in our humanness we're weakened and we're, we kind of expand things a little bit, don't we? Might blow it up a little bit. You know, took 25 guards to put him on the cross, you know, whatever, I don't know. But, you know, um, I, just, I just think that Jesus is probably sitting there going, huh, interesting. I seem to remember it a little different, but okay, go with that, you know. You know, that's what I'm saying. And so, and what did they see? Who did they see? I see, I like this, because Jesus comes up and he, they were not able to recognize him. So what were they recognizing? Was it some eight-year-old freckle-faced red-headed kid? Or was it some 80-year-old hunched-over grandpa over here with a big old beard dripping? To, I mean, bigger than Moses's, right? And so, you know, I mean, wh who was it they were seeing? Or was there just this blur and they thought, oh, I got glaucoma now. <laughs> well, here we go, you know? Um, so how did they not see him? I'm just kidding. And I don't have to know the answer. I just, I think that way sometimes. So, um, so maybe you don't, but hopefully you do now. And so anyway, <laughs> so... Easter morning. It's a good time to fuel up on hope, isn't it? Easter morning. If you don't gain hope out of Easter morning and you claim to be a Christian, I'm going to question your Christianity. Guarantee I'll question your Christianity. Because if you claim to be a Christian and you don't gain hope out of the fact that Jesus Christ came out of that tomb and he did it for you and he did it for me because we're weak and we're frail and we're, we're a mess... Or some people like to say a hot mess, right? <laughs> it's just, we're, we're all jacked up. And he comes up and he goes, yeah, guess what? I could fix that. And if you can't gain hope out of that, if you can't gain hope out of him having a good time with these guys on the road to Emmaus, I'm like, come on, we got to have a good time, right? Um, if you can't gain hope out of Easter, stop lying to yourself and actually get a relationship with God because if you have a relationship with God, you're going to gain hope, right? I think it's awesome. I think it's great. When we reflect on God, though, um, do, we, do we look at the real God or do we look at the one we want to put up on the pedestal? See, Easter, with it being a time of reflection, is a great time for us to open our eyes to Jesus. It's a great time for us to open our eyes to Jesus, to the real Jesus, to the true Jesus. Not all the foofy stuff, right? Because, you know, there's some foofy stuff in there, but there's the real deal too, right? And so there's the brutality of it all. There's the, there's the we have to be serious sometimes. Now, I get to joke, right? But there are also the, the, the very serious sides of things. I can come over here and we can play. We can play with the story a little bit. I don't think God has any problem with that. In fact, he, did, he gave us the sense of humor, right? Now, some of y'all don't have one, but I've got one. And so, but he also gives us that serious side. We have to be serious because our relationship with him is very, very serious. And Jesus was very, very serious when he, when he went to that cross. When, well, when he left the throne and come down to be a babe, dependent upon anyone around him, not upon himself. Then he grows up. He goes to that, through that time that he went through that we described the other night, right? He goes through the brutality of mankind for mankind, and he goes through that grave and he comes up out of that. You got to be a little serious about some of that, right? We got to be serious. That was some serious business. Doesn't mean you can't tell an Easter egg joke. It's okay if the peacock gets beat up, right? It's okay. So, right? Um, but, but we do have to open our eyes and see the true Jesus. And this is a beautiful time of year to do it because there's so many people that, um, that, that now they're focusing. Now they're actually, this is the time. We have people who are called CEOs, Christmas and Easter only. When am I going to church? Christmas and Easter only. That's it. Unless someone dies or gets married, and they better hope I like them. Because I'm probably not going otherwise there. Right? Ain't that true? And there's so many people that their, their funeral is at a funeral home. Why? Because they don't have a relationship with God. Right? And so, but we have these CEOs and, 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 and you know, this time of year when we start reflecting, when they're here, we need to impact. When they're, when they're here, 
We have to reach out to them. And if they're still out there and they didn't come today, we still have to reach out to them. Because just because they didn't show up this Easter doesn't mean they won't show up next week if you invite them. It doesn't mean that if you share what Jesus Christ put in your heart, what Jesus Christ has done for you, what he's, everything about this entire story, which, by the way, is more of a his story, this entire thing, if we share that with them out there, guess what? There's a better chance they're not going to be Christmas and Easter only. It's a great time to reflect for ourselves, but it's a great time to reflect with them. Share it. Love them. Right? And we're doing a disservice to God when we say, you know, I know what, they should go read it themselves. Really? Is that what Jesus did? Did he come down and go, you know, I'm just going to hang out here in the temple. Y'all go get your books. Get your scrolls out. Do your thing. At 12 years old, he was astonishing them with his wisdom. He was astonishing the teachers of the day with his wisdom as a 12-year-old. I don't think Jesus said, hey, you all go read it. Let me know what it is. I'll I'll take the condensed version, okay? Just let me know, right? So it's a great time for reflection. We need to open our eyes to the true Jesus. Luke 24, verse 28 through 31 says, as they approached the village to which we're back to the the road to Emmaus, okay? Um, So Jesus and the the dudes. Um, So as they approached the village to which they were going, Jesus continued on as as if he were going further. But they urged him strongly, stay with us, for it is nearly evening. The day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and began to give it to them. Sound familiar? Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he disappeared from their sight. They finally realized when he broke his body once again, they finally realized who he was. It's a beautiful time for reflection. This morning we're going to break bread together in a little bit. Think about that. Their eyes were opened at that time. If your eyes have been a little closed, allow them to come open. And we're going to do that during the last song. So, um, just uh, if you need to, some folks want to prepare themselves ahead of time. So if you zone out now, okay, I got it. So, all right. But uh, so more than anything else on Easter morning, we want our eyes to really recognize who Jesus is in our lives, right? We need to recognize who he is in our lives because sometimes he's pretty small. Is he small in your life or is he huge in your life? Because he needs to be like that. Because that's what he was, was like that. For our lives, so he should be like that in our lives. Jesus wants not just to be Lord sometimes, not just to be Lord over your job, not just to be Lord over your marriage, not just to be Lord over your kids, not just to be Lord over your household, not just to be Lord over your church, not just to be that. He wants to be the Lord of all. He wants to be Lord of all people and all things. That's what Jesus requests of us. That's the only thing he asks of us for that. So the question we have is, will you let him be your Savior? Will you let Jesus be your Savior? Because he wants to be your Savior, but many of us are doing this. We're doing this. Does, now, and I want to go, I, I need to, some would say, oh, you're getting all Christianese on me. Yeah, good, I'm glad, I don't care about that, right? But some would say, oh, you're getting all um, uh, you know, I got to do everything for him or, or it's nothing. I got to do everything for him and you think you're so perfect. I can tell you, I guarantee you, I am the farthest thing from perfect. I've been broken so many times in the last week, in the last month. The devil's been doing his thing. He wants to tear this thing down. He wants to destroy this church. And I could tell you that he has been attacking so much in the last month. Easter is a powerful time, folks. He knew God was going to do his thing here. 
And he wanted to stop it as best as he could. Here's the thing. Don't give up. Keep your faith. Keep the hope. That's what keeps us going. He put this step in front of me, and I will continue to take it. And I encourage you to take the step. Take whatever that step is. Take that step. In John 10, 10, Jesus says, The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. He wants to be the Lord of all of us and all in us, but he wants to give us life to the full. That means he wants to max out on us. And he won't do it. If, if, if you're not willing to accept him, how can he possibly max out on you? Boy, I'll tell you what, I think what he did going through that, going, going to the cross, going through the birth, but going through the cross and what he did over the course of this weekend coming up through that grave, what he did there, I think that's some pretty powerful stuff, but he's going to act that powerful in my life. Lord knows I want it. I want it. Come on, Lord. Fill me up. Overflow me. Let's do this. He wants us to have life to the full. Don't you want that? Don't you think your neighbors, your friends, your co-workers want that, even if they don't know it? We've been doing it for centuries. pastor gets up here and says, He is risen! And his congregation says, Absolutely. Absolutely. We're going to go to the foot of the throne. We're going to pray. We're going to do, uh, share, break bread and, and, and uh, share the cup afterwards. And so we believe that no matter where you're at, if Christ is your Lord and Savior, if you declare Christ as your Lord and Savior, if you're a follower of Jesus Christ, you may come and enjoy and join us as we break the bread and share the cup. Um, so please, just if you're, if you're not part of our congregation, you're still in the family, okay? So don't be afraid to come on up. Prepare your hearts. As I pray to the Lord, pray for yourselves. Prepare your heart before the table. And when we come out of this, Christ came out anew. And when we come out of this morning, this meal, we need to come out anew. Father, thank you so much. Thank you for this day, this opportunity. Thank you for this message. Dear Lord, you and I, we've had a lot of conversations lately. Boy, howdy, I'll tell you what, it's been, it's been a little bit of a ride, but Lord, I wouldn't give it up for anything because you know what, Jesus Christ's ride was a whole lot worse than mine. And he never did anything wrong. I've messed things up. I've made poor choices. He never, he never made a poor choice, Lord. And we thank you. Thank you, Jesus, for sacrificing yourself for us. Thank you, Jesus, for setting the example that, that we're about to follow. Thank you, Jesus, for breaking the bread, breaking your body for us. Thank you for shedding your blood for us. And Lord, as, as we come, come to the table, as we come to the meal, and we share this bread and this wine together, as we come and we share the cup, please, Lord, overflow us, overflow us. Break our hearts right now that when we receive what you have given to us, that when we receive it, we will be filled up, filled up with you to overflowing. On the night that Jesus was betrayed, he took the bread and he broke it and he said, take, eat, do this in remembrance of me. This is my body broken for you. He also took the cup and he said, take, drink, this is... This is my blood shed for you. Take and do and remember to me. As we come to this table, take the elements as Jesus delivered them. We pray these things in your Son, Jesus Christ's name. Amen.